you guys. What's up? What's going on? I'm just chilling here in the house watching uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Well, I'm actually just finished watching it. And let's do some shout outs from last week, you guys. So I have a shout out for Greg Blanchard. Hey, Greg, it's been a little minute. How you been? Even though Portia was wrong in her part, I always feel bad when one person is disliked by a bunch of people. Laugh out loud. Also, she's funny how everyone just ex it's funny how everyone just accepts Sheree as the bone collector and they aren't going to fight her about it because they know that Sheree don't play that. They, I think that they feel like Portia is an easy target. She's easy to come at. I mean, now she's standing up for herself a lot more than she used to. Like, you come at her, she come right back at you. I think more so now because she doesn't really feel like she needs them as much. But they're so used to that Portia who's trying to get ahead, trying to make a name for herself. And was kind of more so the kiss behind type of person. Uh, Karan Roland said, yeah, Miss Underground would have did better not apologizing to Candy. Exactly, because, I mean, she just looked real stupid doing it. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So... Kenya, she was still getting over the loss of her grandmother slash mother. Uh, you know, she recently buried her, so she still had that somberness kind of hanging over her head. Cynthia actually meets up with her and confronts her about the fact that everybody was coming at her crazy after she left because they were just like, how is it that she, out of all people, hasn't even gotten a chance to meet him? And she's like, she feels the same way. And she's like, don't worry, you're going to get your receipts real soon. So I guess some someday she's going to be able to meet her. She's like, you know, I was in New York recently, and he is out in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's been plenty of opportunities. But if this is supposed to be your best friend, it's like, why not, you know? It's not like nobody don't know who he is anymore because his name and face is out there now. Portia, she asked Sheree, um... Uh, <laughs> If she's married now, because she just reveals everybody that she got a boyfriend, and now it's all over everywhere. It's all over the blogs and everywhere. So I'm like, dang, did somebody from the cast spill the beans? Did she go ahead and just let all the blogs and stuff know because she revealed it to everybody else? Like, I don't understand. Like, damn, word got out real fast, you know? So Cynthia and Peter, they get back into talking business. She actually owes 25% of his new bar one. Well, I guess it's bar two now. That's going to be in Atlanta. So they kind of planned this a long time ago. So she owns 25% of it. So, you know, she came to see the, the site that it's going to be at with Dave found before and just kind of see the progress, which there wasn't much progress. But he's determined to kind of show her, like, you know, he's a boss. He's running stuff. Look how good he did in Charlotte. He's ready to make a killing here in Atlanta as well. So she's excited about that. And they you can still see that they have so much chemistry with each other. I mean, I don't know about them, too. I want to say they should just get back together, but I know there was a lot of problems in the marriage, questions about infidelity, and just Cynthia seeming like she wasn't really, really happy. It's almost like she wants to have him, but then she wants to do whatever she wants as well. Like She wants to maintain this great friendship, but not everybody can do that, especially watching the person that they love walk away and be with somebody else. That's not easy to do, you know? Sheree talks to the kids finally about the whole domestic violence with their father. And it just seemed a little bit awkward, kind of like it was forced a bit. Uh, Kylo, Cairo, he seems like he didn't really want to talk about it. He just seemed really, like, shy and everything. And the, the other youngest daughter, she didn't really seem like she wanted to say too much about it. It was more so the older daughter that was really vocal and not even that vocal, you know, but she kind of was the voice for everybody else, all the rest of the kids. Um, but yeah, I guess because it's their father as well, they didn't really want to touch too much on it. They don't want him to like not love them or whatever. But the daughter, the youngest daughter did say that he tried to talk to her about it and explain everything, but she didn't want to hear it at that moment. She just kind of drove off because... It was after a soccer game, and she really didn't feel it was appropriate to kind of talk about it there, which makes sense. So, 
And that's kind of where they they are. But I do. It does look like Sheree feels like she got a lot, like a weight lifted off her shoulder. She did seem a lot more calmer after she spoke to them about it. So maybe this was like a good step in the right direction. You know, I feel like, and I said this before, I like it when people do things because they genuinely want to help others and not just doing it to get a paycheck because like what the Kardashians do, like, oh, everybody's talking about our lips. Let's make a lip kit. Let's make lipstick. Oh, everybody's talking about my sex tape. Let me be sexier. Let me be a porn star. Let me, let me be naked. You know what I mean? Like, just because... People are bringing it up doesn't mean you have to capitalize off it and go to extremes, you know? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Candy and Riley, they go to this place called iFly, and I always wanted to go there. I'm so afraid of heights. I was super scared when I went rock climbing. I felt like everything was about to give away with on me, and that's when I was much more healthier and able to do stuff like that. Now, I don't even think I would go halfway up that wall. Like, I, my legs would probably start hurting halfway up. But I would definitely, you know, try to do the rock climbing thing again, or at least experience it with friends, even if I don't personally climb. Like, it's just it's just fun to see, fun to take pictures, and just, just a, a good, fun time, you know? And I'm not even, like an adventure girl I'm not a camper I don't like the wilderness but luckily this was an indoor one so yeah they went to do I fly and it just looks so exciting to me even though like I said I don't like heights but it seems like it's fun it'll give me that that danger zone experience without being in danger and that there's somebody there with you so as soon as I feel like I'm getting crazy I'm scared I could just be like mm, cut this off we down Take me back. I'm over this. That's the end of this trip. I'm out. <laughs> so I like that, you know, as opposed to jumping out of a plane, being a super daredevil, then once you out, ain't no turning back. You know what I mean? You're going to have to make your way down with your little parachute. I hope that joint opens up. Okay? So, yeah, I think I would definitely prefer to do this. And I definitely, I think they have one here in New York in Long Island or something. I definitely got to look it up. It's something I want to do. I definitely, that's on, the, that's on my list of things to do. The bucket list, right? That's what they call it. <laughs> I don't like calling it that, but I guess that's kind of what it is. So Riley, she definitely speaks her mind. She lets her mom know that her mom doesn't necessarily have time for her. Like she'll say that she wants to do all these things. She wants to do all these events. But they never follow through because they don't, she's like, oh, well, we got to plan it ahead of time. She's like, yeah, you'll plan it ahead of time and then you'll end up canceling. And I think that Candy does know this as well because she mentioned it, that she feels like she's kind of like Riley kind of got the short end of things because she, she never really had the time for her. But she just wants to win so badly. But I think she's so obsessed with winning and making money that she's allowing all these precious moments to kind of pass her by. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but that's from an outsider looking in. Like, you're never going to get these moments back. You're going to always have a large amount of money unless you go bankrupt somehow, some way, which it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. And I don't know. It's just like everybody else is suffering. And sometimes I, I tend to think about it too. I mean, my schedule is nowhere near the scale of Candy's schedule, but... You know, just like little things, like I don't want to do too much extra time. I don't want to work too much. Even though I work at home, you're not paying your child any attention. You know, they're doing their own thing, watching TV or watching or studying or playing a game. And you still lack that quality time, even though you're still, you're working in the same area. You know, you get to see them physically. But all the good moments that you can say, oh, I remember when I did this with my mom or did this. You're not able to have those, you know. Now, Cynthia, she's getting her groove back, honey. So she got this the same will guy that I told y'all. I don't know about him. Like, I can't put my finger on it yet, but I just got a bad feeling about this one. I feel like he's too smooth. He's Mr. Smooth Criminal, and I'm just not with it. And Candy kind of agrees with me. They did, like, this double date thing. They're not too sure about him. And Candy's just like, you know what? Like, he seemed like one of those fake it till you make it kind of guys. And it's it's possible. She also calls him out because she's like, she knows that he was on some dating site or dating show for Steve Harvey. And he was also supposed to be on some other dating show. So she's still a little skeptical of him. Plus, they don't put homeboy Todd through the ringer through the wire. 
So she like, if he had to go through all this, they call him an opportunist and this and that. And he had a, a pretty good job. You know, it wasn't as big as her job. She was He wasn't making as many zeros as she was making in the bank account. Mm, in my bank account. Oh, yeah. You know, but he was, he was also making a good amount of money. He was, like, producing big shows and stuff like that. This guy, I mean, I don't even know what he does yet. I mean, they didn't really talk about it. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. Maybe they can't talk about it. I mean, he seems like he's okay, but we don't know. You know, he got, he he sent a car for her, which was nice. He had a little chef on deck when they went out on their little boat ride. So that was nice. I mean, it wasn't a yacht or anything like that, but it was a nice little boat. So meanwhile, Portia is looking for love. She signs up to do this whole, you know, blonde date thing. Well, not necessarily blonde date, but just to do like a matchmaking service. And the people, they seem real nice that she picks. But I don't know. I think she should have picked other people. Because, obviously, they didn't know what she really wanted. Well, then again, Portia said that she was open to anything. So she kind of left the door way open for anybody to come in type, type of thing. Like, okay, we can pick anybody. She said she likes a bald head with a beard. And they sure gave her a bald head with a beard. I mean, she said she likes all colors and sizes. They gave her all colors and sizes. They gave her a white guy with a bald head, little beard, but he had no personality. Like, I wouldn't be able to have a good conversation with him because even, like, just watching it, I didn't see, like, a vibe, you know? She just seemed like she was, like, shading him from the beginning. As soon as she saw him, she wasn't feeling him. And she kind of started it off with, like, I'm not going to be able to be here too long, maybe, like, 30 minutes or so because my mom is in town or something and she's waiting for me like some lame excuse that's almost like a, like she could have just made up like oh my sister has to go out and i'm watching my goddaughter or something i mean i mean my my niece i think that would have made more sense than you have to pretty much go back home to kind of babysit your mom like you knew you was going out on a date that that excuse was the lamest i have ever seen but yeah, that was pretty much the highlights of the show. Last thing they just talked a little bit about that whole the jailbird guy. But it wasn't nothing too serious. They 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 talking about it now because you know that's the next big thing. She done put her stuff out there, so that gives them the opportunity to kind of talk about Sheree now. But you know Sheree ain't scared. She won't say what she wanna say when she wanna say it. So she ready. <laughs> Alright guys, but thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about this episode down below for your chance to get a shout out. Stay fabulous, live free, and soar limitless. I will see you in the next one. Laters.